Just a few opening remarks from Coach Smart, and then we'll uh, be glad to take your questions. Coach? Well, it's on to Tennessee, who uh, is – Jeremy's done a tremendous job putting together a really good football team. He's built his team along the offensive and uh, defensive line of scrimmages, and uh, they got a good football team. They're really physical, uh, very experienced at quarterback, uh, very experienced in the secondary. Um, got a lot of respect for the way they play the game. I thought last year they played extremely physical against us, and uh, they that's, that's the brand of football they play. And uh, I got a lot of respect for that. I know Jeremy for a long time, and uh, it's going to be a good football team, two good football teams getting after it. All right, we'll take your questions. Uh, let's take the first two. We'll go to uh, Mark Weiser and Anthony Dasher. Kirby, um, obviously, Cade Mays played with you guys uh, last in the Sugar Bowl. D did you have a sense then he was planning to transfer? And, and what do you think of him coming to play Georgia now w with Tennessee? No, I didn't have a sense then. I thought Cade's done a tremendous job for us. Got a lot of respect for Cade as a player and a, a person. And, uh, you know, that's really all I can say about it. He's no longer with us. So, um, looking forward to the matchup. He's a really good football player, one of the toughest players that I've been around. And, uh, Looking forward to the matchup. And with the waiver that the uh, the conference gave to uh, you know several players that, that were uh, waiting for that, um, what were your thoughts just just about that? That's a commissioner decision. Okay, thank you. Uh, Coach, um, I think it's fair to say that um, this is going to be the most experienced offensive line your team has faced. Just how much better are they this year? What kind of battle are you expecting with your defensive front? Well, I, I, mean, I thought they were a really good offensive line last year. They're well coached. Will Friend, who worked here for a long time, is a tremendous O-line coach. He does a great job. That combined with uh, Coach Chaney, who's got a lot of experience uh, coaching offensive football and as well as uh, offensive lines. He's done a tremendous job. But he and Will put together a physical run plan. They always do. They're going to find ways to run the ball. They're committed to the run, um, in which you've got to be in the SEC. And uh, they got some good players up there. So a lot of these guys played last year. So the addition of Cade, they've got, I mean, really five returning starters when you look at it. Let's go uh, Mike Griffith and Seth Emerson. Uh, yeah, Coach, can you just talk about uh, Jared Carantano? I think this is the first year their quarterbacks had the same uh, coordinator two years in a row. Can, have you noticed the difference in Jared's play this season? I, you know, I've always had an immense amount of respect for Jared. He he plays the game the right way. He is tough. You know, he, he played uh, some games when it was tough, when they didn't have as good an offense line up front early on. They're a lot better now. So I think he's reaping the benefits of a better offensive line, a commitment to the run game, and he's, he's played really well. I mean, you look at the, 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 the bowl game, he led a tremendous comeback. Uh, he's been through the trials and tribulations. He's had ups and downs. He's played, you know, at Alabama in a game that I thought he played well in. I mean, he's he's done a lot of good things. I got a lot of respect for him. Anybody that plays quarterback as long as he has in our conference has earned it. Seth? Yeah, sorry. Kirby, uh, obviously special teams off to a good start. Uh, does this kind of vindicate early on? I know it's early. Uh, doing what you did by bringing in Scott and also like how much has he been assisted by guys like Todd Hartley and other guys on staff? Well, special teams is a team event. I mean, we've got a lot of coaches that assist in special teams. Um, we've got uh, quality control guys that help in special teams. We all assist in that. And, you know, I, I don't know if we're off to a good start or not. I mean, to be honest with you, I don't, I, I see the we've left plays out there and left opportunities out there and, uh, we'll be tested in that regard as high as ever this week because Jeremy's commitment to special teams is very similar to ours. The starters, the best players are out there. Uh, they do a good job scheming people up, and uh, they've always put a good package together. So um, I wouldn't want to just jump on the bandwagon that we're doing great special teams. I thought that we left some plays out there uh, last week, and we got to continue to grow in that area. we got to get our, we got to get more players buying into that because when I don't have a role as a starter – it's a lot better when you say, man, I'm going to go dominate special teams. And uh, we got to get some more of our freshmen involved in that. Uh, Chip Towers and then uh, Dean Leahy. Yeah, Kirby, uh, you, you mentioned your relationship with Jeremy Pruitt and how far back you go. I just wonder with the uh, accusations of toxic environment and 
him saying not the healthiest of environments uh, for, for Cade Mays using that in their uh, uh, attempts to get the waiver. Did you have any discussions with Jeremy or has that impacted your relationship with Jeremy? Not really. I know coaches in the SEC will do anything they can to get guys eligible and that's, that's their decision. Kirby, I wanted to ask sort of a basic question, which is what do you, in your 20 years of dealing and coaching, <clears throat> What does pressure on a quarterback do to the quarterback? Uh, and, and why do y'all call blitzes? Pressure on the quarterback, you know, causes indecision. It causes doubt. Uh, it causes confusion. I think it affects every quarterback differently because some, some do better against pressure. Some do worse. You know, you look at statistics and see how does he do against three-man rush, four-man rush, five-man rush, six-man rush. And uh, you try to evaluate each quarterback on how they respond to that pressure. I didn't. What was the second part of the question? Well, it was same basic. Why do coaches blitz? Yeah, I think they blitz to change it up. You know, if you throw a, a mean fastball and it's 101 mile an hour and that's all you got, eventually they'll hit it. So you're, you, 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 when you're pitching, you better have a couple pitches. And the idea behind pressuring versus not pressuring is to be able to pitch. Uh, let's go to uh, Jake Rowe and then Paul Newberry. Uh, Coach, I wanted to ask you about uh, the, the wide receiver position. And, you know, through two games, Kiaris has stood out, and, and, and you guys have had George and, and a lot of other guys make plays. How deep do you feel like that unit can go? And, and are you guys really – I mean, you seem to be playing a lot of guys there. Are you looking to even go um, deeper and find roles for guys there? Yeah, we want to give the best guys an opportunity to play. You know, I don't know how many people really realize it, but LSU last year didn't play really more than three wideouts the entire game. And if you have tremendous conditioning, you play the best players. Um, we don't think that we're in uh, the best uh, mid-season form in terms of shape. So we're rolling guys and playing guys. But, uh, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about playing the best players and giving your team the best opportunity to win. Um, and we're comfortable with the guys we've got, and we're developing the ones that are younger and getting better, and we won't continue to do that. I'd love to have it if we had 10 guys who could go out there and all play winning football, but it's hard to rep that many guys at that position. Coach, I want to ask you about uh, wearing a mask on the sideline. I know uh, a lot of – it appeared it was that you didn't always have your mask on or it was down low during Saturday's game. Uh, I'm just curious, how tough is it to coach trying to – to wear the mask and, and in light of what we've seen in the NFL, do you think college coaches, yourself included, should try to do a better job of, of keeping the mask on as much as possible? Absolutely. I've been talked to about it by the commissioner and several others, and this has helped me tremendously because this is one that stays with me the whole time. Just got to figure out a way to get it tighter and more comfortable on there. The biggest thing is when you're in the middle of uh, coaching and talking to somebody, you got you to get comfortable with being able to leave it up and leave it on, and that's probably the toughest thing. Uh, let's go to uh, Augusta, Red and Black. Do you have a question? And then we'll go to Brandon Sudge. Yeah. Hey, Kirby. I wanted to ask kind of about the execution of the offense that you've talked about and how much Todd Munkin has contributed to that execution really coming together in the past week. Well, it's still coming. I mean, we we, we didn't, you know, we, we didn't execute perfectly Saturday and I don't know that you ever will execute perfectly but we've got to do it at a much higher rate if that's 70 percent clean we got to be 85 percent clean we got to be 95 percent clean we got to be able to function with everybody on the same page in terms of alignment assignment there's so many details that go into uh, the execution of an offense and we don't have those details mastered yet we've got some young players uh, we've got some guys playing for the first time still and they're growing they just got to grow faster but uh, I think Todd does a great job of teaching the ins and outs of why you do it, how you do it, uh, what's the reason for why you do it. It's not like he's trying to trick somebody and out execute people and, uh, and maybe do it better than they do it. Brandon? Hey, uh, Kirby, so I had a uh, two part question. Uh, first off, uh, Jermaine uh, Johnson, I saw that um, he didn't uh, participate Saturday. I was wondering if you provide any update on him. Um, and then secondly, with the offense, um, is there anything on tape that you saw within the um, second half when you say you guys need to execute better? Um, look, look, looking back, I know it's a lot of personnel changes and going 
run heavy in the second half, but is there anything on tape that uh, sticked out in terms of playing a playing a complete uh, game offensively? Yeah, I thought that uh, you know our second half probably wasn't uh, as explosive as our first half. Um, some of that had to do with uh, Auburn. Some of it had to do with us. Uh, some of it had to do with the score. A lot of it had to do with the defense. I mean, when we don't get off the field on defense, it's hard to 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 be explosive on offense. You get less at bats. So we got to do a better job in terms of that. We do it as far as Jermaine. He's done a, uh, a tremendous job for us. He had a really good camp. Um, put on some weight and has it's gotten better. He was a little dinged up uh, going into the last game, and uh, we were going to use him if we needed to. Um, if we thought we, you know, really needed him, and, and with the way the game played out, didn't necessarily have to. Um, but we feel good about him, and he's working to get healthy. Let's go to Vance Levy and Jay Black. Vance, Ernie, I know you're typically kind of uh, refrain how much you'll comment on officiating, but looking back at Richards targeting, is there anything you think he could have done differently after looking at it on tape, and then? Also, do you think perhaps one day, perhaps there should, you should the league should entertain a, a situation where there's like a five yard penalty for incidental head to head, much like with the punter. Yeah, it's a it's a tough rule because they're doing it for the safety of the game, and as a parent of a kid who plays the game, I think it's important to emphasize the safety as much as you can. And uh, since they've implemented the rules they've implemented, they've certainly cut down on the amount of uh, targeting and head injuries. Uh, unfortunately, some things in football are just going to happen. And, uh, you know, I don't think it was a situation where he was leading with the head, um, but it ended up being to the head and neck area. And sometimes that happens to a DB because the receiver moves. Um, but that's sometimes beyond your control. It's part of the game. Uh, if it makes the game safer, then it's probably the right thing to do. Coach, you had mentioned in our post game show with Chuck that you thought that Tennessee was better than Auburn at this point. What makes them better than Auburn right now? Well, I, I think the experience they have uh, along the fronts. You know, when you look at a defensive line and offensive line, I, I really believe that's where the game starts because, you know, there's nothing easier than being able to – if you're able to run the ball, it makes the game easy. And when you can't run the ball, it makes the game difficult. And that's all based on your offensive line and their defensive line. Now, it's not to say there's not some offensive line out there that's got great pass pro and the team can throw it for 600 yards and never have to run the ball and be successful. That, that does exist. LSU broke that norm, and it wasn't that they couldn't run it. They didn't have to run it last year. Um, but when I start with Tennessee, I say they have a commitment to the run. They're physical on the offensive line. They've got a deep offensive line. They've got big people on the defensive line. They've got experience. They've got big people. They're physical up front. So when you start with those two, they're just ahead right now of, of where Auburn is, I mean, in terms of that. Uh, Emily, did you have a question? Hey, Coach. Um, I was just wondering, I know it's really early on, obviously, but from week one to week two, what you've liked from Zamir and if you could give us an update on Cook. Yes, on uh, Zamir, I, I I like his special teams play. He's had uh, two really critical blocks that sprung our kickoff return unit. He uh, uh, has done a good job um, picking up pressures, caught the ball out of the backfield. His yards after contact was much better this game than the last. And his leadership is uh, starting to take form, and he's starting to get more comfortable uh, in that ro in that role. You know, James will be day to day. Um, we're trying to get him back. Um, he, we think he's going to be okay to go. We thought he could have gone, you know, Saturday night. But again, that's going to be one of those. I'll know a lot more after practice today because I haven't seen those guys since then. Hey, we've got a couple minutes left. Anybody want to just jump in? Coach Smart, Coach, Coach Smart if uh, you could just touch on um, right now, you don't have a normal, you know, off season with COVID and all that kind of stuff. How far behind would you say that? you are in terms of installation of, of stuff? Is there stuff that you would normally have in at this point that maybe you don't? Uh, not really. I mean, we've had uh, – traditionally, we install in the spring and then we reinstall in the fall. So whatever we installed in the fall, we would have done in the spring. It would have been the second time. We would be much more efficient at doing what we're doing, but it's not like we would have more volume. There's only so much space between the ears that these kids can handle, and you got to be careful not to overload that. 
with all the emphasis, uh, all the emphasis put on the questions. offensive line this week of Tennessee's Kirby, how important or how would you assess how your defensive line has played so far this season? Uh, we've got an experienced defensive line. Um, I think they played hard, uh, played played the physical, and that's what we want to do. But they haven't faced a unit um, as a group and a group of backs. So the combination of really good backs, experienced quarterback very experienced offensive line, um, this, is, this is by far the biggest test. Kirby, there, there's a lot we don't see, a lot we don't know about, you know, guys having spots and things like that. But um, notice, you know, Matt Landers kind of tracking the ball and, and didn't necessarily, I don't know, see that ball on, on against uh, Auburn the other night. I wanted to see kind of, uh, kind of what his deal is in terms of development and, and the deep ball and things like that because it seems like he's kind of had those issues in the past. I know Matt's actually had a really good camp. Uh, Matt's, um, you know, learning our new system, being able to play and execute is really important for Matt to, to know that. He, he's contributed on special teams. Uh, that was a situation where he, you know, he, we, we really selling him driving and, and really pushing vertical before he looks back. And, you know, he didn't find the ball right away, um, which is unfortunate because you'd like for him to be able to make that play. But I think they'll still think Matt's a talented player that <laughs> – Working to get better every day. Coach, uh, uh, didn't get a chance to ask you Saturday night about the job Christopher Smith did uh, relieving uh, um, Richard LeCount in the second half. And if, uh, if you could also j uh, touch on Kiaris Jackson's uh, production so far this year. Yeah, Kiaris has been a great leader. He's been a productive off the field on <laughs> his own. He represents us. In, in so many ways and uh, really proud of Kiers' leadership, but also happy that a guy that works as hard as he does during the week gets rewarded for that. And uh, he's one of those guys, he's similar to Miko in how he works. He works so hard at practice that the games come easy to him. And uh, I'm certainly proud of the way he's competing. He plays with physical toughness the way you want to play. Chris did a great job. He actually got a lot more reps last week. Uh, Richard was banged up and uh, Chris was more prepared to play than probably he's ever been. Um, and it was it was pretty unique that he got to go in after getting all those reps, and he got to go in and play there in the, the late first half, second half. Coach, can you address the, the – obviously, Stetson, you said, he, you know, he's the guy right now. How, do, how does it work as far as behind him with, with Dwan and, and JT? Yeah, we're going to continue to develop all those guys. I think all those guys are good quarterbacks, and Carson, JT, uh, Dewan, whether they're throwing 7-on-7 seven seven against the scouts, whether they're throwing against us on defense, whether they're getting reps over there with the offense, they're going to continue to be developed because that's what they came here to do, and we want them part of the game plan. Kirby, what, what struck you as, as different Saturday? I mean, I'm sure a lot of things in terms of, uh, you know, a game day at home without, uh, you know, with, not in a typical season, without recruiting, without a dog walk. What was the experience like for you the whole day? It, from the from the kickoff to the end of the game, probably nothing was really that different for us. Uh, leading up to, uh, you know, the other dog walk was definitely different. And then um, recruiting, you know, not, not being able to visit with prospects and share that atmosphere is a – uh, a tough loss, but it's it's you know it's kind of equal across the board. I'll take two more questions. I want to ask about Notori Johnson real quick. He traveled to Arkansas, but did not see him the other day. Just want to check on his status. Yeah, Notori's right now working. He's focusing on academics and focusing on some other things right now. Last question, Coach. It's supposed to be like 80, 90 percent chance of rain on Saturday. Do you guys typically work some wet ball stuff every week, or you just do it based off of the forecast for the weekend? Uh, we have a schedule where we do it not every week, but once every few weeks. But obviously with the forecast, we'll have the capability of working on it. Thanks, Coach Smart. Thanks, everybody.